Hi guys! In this video we're going to be looking at impulse of a force, using impulse to find impact force, using impulse to find change of momentum, and we're going to finish with a summary. So first of all we need to define the impulse of a force and understand what it is. So we've seen previously that force is defined as the rate of change of momentum. So we can therefore write it as an equation. We can say that force is equal to the change in momentum, delta P, divided by the time taken for this change, T. The force here is in newtons. Our change in momentum is in kilograms meters per second. And the time taken for the change is in seconds. We can rearrange this definition to find an expression for total change of momentum when a force acts for an interval of time. So we can write F as the change in momentum, delta P, divided by the time taken for this change, delta T. So that's our interval of time. And then we can rearrange this for the total change of momentum. So if we multiply by delta T, we end up with F times delta t is equal to delta p, the change in momentum. The name we give to this quantity is impulse. The impulse of a force on an object is the product of force and time for which the force acts. For example here we have a golf club and a golf ball and the club hits the ball and exerts a force F on it. And this force F is exerted on the ball for a certain amount of time, which is delta t. So we can use the force and the time, delta t, to find the impulse. And we normally use the equation we derived to express impulse. So we say that impulse is equal to the force times the change in time, so is equal to f delta t, which we've seen is equal to delta p. So the impulse can be given in two units and that is depending on whether you think of it as the force times the change in time or as the change in momentum. So if we think about it as change in momentum, we can see it's going to have units kilograms meters per second because that's the units for change in momentum. Or if we think of it as force times time, then it's going to have units newton seconds. And that's because force has units newton and time has units second, and we multiply them together, so we get newton seconds. So, as we said, this is the force applied in newtons. This is the time for which the force acts in seconds. And delta P is the change in momentum in kilograms meters per second. For example, we can find the impulse on a golf ball that is hit for 0 0.1 seconds with a force of 10,000 newtons. So we've just said that impulse is equal to the force applied times the time for which the force acts. We've been told that the force has magnitude 1000 newtons and that it's applied for 0 0.1 seconds. So we can multiply by 0 0.1 seconds. So this gives us an impulse of 100 newton seconds. So that's how we find the impulse on a golf ball. As another example, we can find the impulse on a one kilogram football that starts at rest and is kicked, giving it a speed of two meters per second. So here's our football that's initially at rest and then it's kicked and it has speed two meters per second. So we begin by equating impulse to change in momentum. So we saw that impulse is equal to the force applied times the change in time. And we know that this is equal to the change in momentum delta P. So that's another way to think of impulse. We can also think of impulse as the change in momentum. We then substitute in our equation for momentum and remember that the ball has a constant mass. So we can take this equation a step further by saying impulse which is equal to the change in momentum, is therefore equal to the change in the mass times the velocity, because that's what momentum is equal to, mass multiplied by the velocity of an object. 
and we've just said that the mass doesn't change, so the mass is constant. So this means that the impulse is equal to the mass, because that remains constant, multiplied by the change in velocity. So we only need to consider the change in velocity. And the change in velocity is given by the difference in velocity. So the velocity after minus the velocity before the collision. So before the foot hits the ball. So finally, we can say that the impulse is equal to the mass of the ball m multiplied by the change in velocity. And the change in velocity is given by the velocity after minus the velocity before. And finally, we substitute in our values. So impulse is equal to one kilogram multiplied by the change in velocity. So we know that the velocity after the collision, we've been told, is two meters per second. And initially, the ball is at rest. So this means the velocity before is zero. So that's because it's at rest. So this therefore gives us an impulse of one times two, so two kilograms meters per second. So now that we understand what impulse is, we can see how we can use impulse to find impact force. If we have a known change of momentum or impulse, we can find the magnitude of impact force. So for example, this ball here is hit with an impact force and if we know the impulse that the ball receives or essentially the change in momentum because we've seen that impulse is equal to the change in momentum delta p we can actually find the magnitude of the impact force so we know that delta p divided by t is equal to the force so in this case the impact force and we can also write delta P as impulse. So we've got impulse divided by delta T. And this is then also equal to our impact force F. So as long as we know the change of momentum or the impulse, we can find the magnitude of the impact force. Examples of impact forces are kicking a football, hitting a golf ball or two cars crashing. So when this golf ball is hit, it receives an impact force. When this person kicks this football, it exerts an impact force on the ball. And when these two cars crash, they each experience impact forces. So all of these are examples of impact forces. For example, we can find the magnitude of the impact force on a car that collides and experiences an impulse of 1.2 times 10 to the 6 kilograms meters per second for two seconds. So for example, we can consider this car here in the collision. So we've said it experiences an impulse of 1.2 times 10 to the 6 kilograms meters per second. So the impulse that the car experiences is equal to 1.2 times 10 to the 6 kilograms meters per second and we've been told that this impulse lasts for two seconds so using this information we can find the impact force on the car we start by expressing impulse in terms of impact force so we've said that impulse is equal to the impact force, so the force applied, multiplied by the time for which it is applied. We then rearrange this to make impact force the subject. So we divide impulse by delta t to get the impact force as the subject. And we finally substitute in our values to get the impact force. So f is going to be equal to the impulse, which is 1.2 times 10 to the 6 kilograms meters per second, divided by the time for which it is applied, which is 2 seconds. So this therefore gives us a force that is equal to 0 0.6 times 10 to the 6 kilograms meters per second squared. So the force is therefore equal to 6 times 10 to the 5 newtons. 
because one newton is equal to one kilogram meter per second squared. And finally, we can see how we can use impulse to also find the change of momentum. So we've seen how we can use it to find the impact force, but we can also use it to find change of momentum. We can use the magnitude of an impact force on an object and the amount of time for which it acts to find the change in momentum of the object. So going back to our previous example of hitting a golf ball with a certain force F, we know that the force F multiplied by delta T, the time for which it is applied, is equal to the impulse. And we've also said that impulse is equal to change in momentum delta P. So we can use impulse to find the change in momentum. And this change of momentum can then be used to find the speed of the object after the impact. So this is because we know that momentum is equal to the object's mass, m, times its velocity. So if we know the change in momentum, we can find speeds of the objects before or after impact. And of course, this is provided we have constant mass. So we're assuming the mass doesn't change throughout the collision. So we can now say that the change in momentum, delta p, is equal to m delta v because we've said the mass doesn't change it's the velocity that changes so we can rewrite this change in velocity delta v as the difference in velocity before and after the impact force so we've got v after minus v before we want the difference in the velocities so now let's look at an example where we're going to find the velocity after an impact. A 0.04 kilogram golf ball is at rest before it is hit with an average impact force of 10 newtons. So here we have a golf ball and it's hit by a force from the golf club. The amount of time that the golf club is in contact with the ball is 0.2 seconds. What is the speed of the ball after it has been hit? So we've been told that the force acts for a certain amount of time, delta t. And we want to find out what is the golf ball's velocity after it's been hit by this impact force. So we want to find its velocity v. Our first step is to write down the equation of impulse in terms of the force and time the force acts. So impulse is equal to the force multiplied by the time for which it acts, delta t. Step two is to calculate the impulse of the force on the ball. So we can calculate the impulse because we have all the necessary values. We know that the force on the ball is 10 newtons and we're multiplying this by the time for which it acts, which is 0.3 seconds. So this therefore gives us an impulse of three newton seconds. Step three is to equate the impulse to the change in momentum. So we've said that impulse is equal to the change in momentum and we found that the impulse is equal to three newton seconds. So therefore, if we're equating the impulse to the change of momentum, this tells us that the change in momentum is three kilograms meters per second and the change in momentum is given by the momentum after the collision p after minus the momentum before p before and we've just found that this is equal to three kilograms meters per second step four is to substitute in the known momentum before the impact so before the impact, we know that the golf ball is stationary, so it's at rest. So this tells us that the momentum before is equal to zero kilograms meters per second. So if the momentum before is equal to zero, then the change in momentum is just given by the momentum after. So that means the momentum after the collision is three kilograms meters per second. Step five is to express momentum in terms of mass and velocity of the ball. So we know that momentum is equal to mass times velocity. 
So the change in momentum of the golf ball is therefore going to be given by its mass times its change in velocity delta v. However, we've just said initially it's stationary. So that means the initial velocity is zero. So the change in momentum is therefore given by the mass of the golf ball multiplied by its velocity after the impact, so v after. And this is equal to the change in momentum, which we've said is three kilograms meters per second. So our final step is to rearrange to find the speed of the ball after the hit. So to find the speed of the ball after, v after, we're just going to divide the change in momentum, delta p, by the mass of the ball, m. So now we can just substitute in our values. So we've said the change in momentum is three kilograms meters per second, and we're dividing this by the mass of the ball, which is 0 0.4 kilograms. So this gives us the velocity of the ball after the impact as 7.5 meters per second. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.